Hello. Hi, Anne, Cindy, Erica, Karen, Matt, Troy, welcome. Just let me know if you can, that you can hear me. Just a chat, just so I know. Thanks, Cindy. Wonderful. Hey all, thanks for being here with me on Friday, the 15th of April. It's 4.01 p.m. Central Standard Time. And my name is Kimberly. I'm happy to be here in the basement <laughs> with all of you. <sighs> Arrive in a nice seat. Hi, Karen. And um, I've been practicing, I teach at a, a nature-based school and I teach kids from the age, thanks, Troy. I teach ages uh, five to fourth grade. Um, and I have been really practicing um, this idea of collective intention with them and to get them to think outside of their own personal intention and how their personal intention affects the whole. Um, so I have some children that have expressed their a challenge of focus and some of them have expressed their challenge um, to be a little rigid or to be a little bit uh, stuck, you know, in decision-making or um, poor losing, you know, in, in games and things like that. Um, and to wrap this all up in a little bow, um, things like I am focused not only helps them individually, but it helps the whole class, right? Because if I um, am focused, then I can either set the example to others to also be focused, or I can help the whole class have this idea of what it means to be focused. Kind of the same thing, right? <laughs> it's setting the example and um, expressing the need for it as a whole. So tonight in the class, um, I challenge you or uh, I offer and invite you to make an intention that not only services you personally, but also is good for the whole, the collective, the community, um, maybe even the space that you're in, your family, um, your social circle. What is it that you have and hold as a sankalpa that also helps the whole. Uh, and this is a loaded, uh, this is a loaded invitation, I know. Things such as I am peace um, comes really quickly, especially to this traditional style of yoga and to this traditional class at Heartland Yoga. You know, we do strive to have that embodiment of what it is to be peace. Um, and so this is just an idea. Things like I am calm or I am balanced. You know, what is it that services you, again, that can be collective? And um, I think that it comes in the time, no better than now, to really think outside of ourselves and dedicate our practice and our intention to the entirety of the humanity that we live with, right? And um, and I'm not the best at talking about intentions, especially on the spot and especially at the beginning of a class. Uh, it's one of those conversational topics for me, but I hope that you get the gist of it. <laughs> so coming in and settling in our body and thinking of it collectively. So thinking of that class, that time that you sat in a classroom with other bodies, right? And together the teacher asks, to sit in sankalpa, to sit in an easy position and bring to mind an intention. So settle into our bodies collectively. And for a moment, just keep your eyes open. 
and just look straight ahead of you. And I noticed this, or I received this exercise um, from Resma Menachem, who did a, a recent podcast with Krista Tibbet on, on being. And he asks in this practice, as you sit here staring straight out, to notice what's landed. Notice what's landed in this moment, whether that be in the body, what's landed in the mind, in the memory, what's landed right now. And then just take a moment to look over your left shoulder using your neck and your hips. Looking over your left shoulder, using your, your neck and your hips and then coming back to center. So we're using this vagal nerve as well as the psoas nerve as we move. And then looking over your right shoulder, using again the neck and the hips and coming back to center again. Notice here what's landed. And then together we'll breathe collectively, taking a nice full breath in and out. <sighs> breathing in and breathing out. <sighs> and begin to orient yourself in the space that you're in. So starting to look around the space without attaching to what looks nice and what needs cleaned, uh, what needs to be moved or fixed, just looking around the space, looking up and looking down and maybe making the eye contact with other members that you are also practicing with and even in this moment, invite and welcome the energies of any loved ones that you have. And maybe even ones who are, need, are in need of your love or dedicating this moment and this practice and this intention to those that are in need of balance or the sense of being calm or the sense of safety or action or rebirth inviting and welcoming them into this practice. And then close your eyes and bring your hands to your low belly. This space, the sacred space of the first and second chakra. And slow down the breath. Breathing mindfully. Noticing the exhale. And seeing about just adding a little bit more length to the exhale, making it just a little bit longer than the inhale. Arrive in your intention, this idea of the collective, what is good for you is good for the whole. And taking one more nice mindful breath with a long exhale and start to slowly open your eyes. Beautiful, we'll just come right into Brahma, or sorry, breath of fire here. So just sitting where you are, maybe you can switch the front leg if you're in easy pose, cross-legged to the back, that feels comfortable for you. And we'll just take a few moments to breathe out of the nose. The exhale is a forceful breath from the low belly out through the nose, mouth is closed. I'll demonstrate the first round. We'll do this for about a minute, a little less than. So finding that comfort in your seat, maybe a tissue or a towel to catch anything that's going to be expelled out. And then taking a nice full breath in, close the eyes and begin pumping.
Continue pumping your breath, noticing if the speed needs to slow down or you are able to speed up. Five more seconds here, five, four, three, two, one. Exhale the breath completely, breathe all the way out. Hold the breath out for just a moment until you need to inhale. Draw the navel in, pelvic floor lifts, find that bandha, mula bandha action. Lengthen through the spine, take a nice full inhale. And breathe out. Returning to a normal breath here. Breathing in and breathing out. Notice what's landed. Beautiful. Opening the eyes, coming back into the space here. You can move any bolster or blanket underneath your seat if that's okay with you. We're, we will stay in an easy pose, but if you haven't yet, switch the back leg front forward. And then just doing a little bit of a Sufi grind action. It's my favorite um, to begin the class. It really gets the abdominals in as well as stretching through the legs. And I'll try to do my best to show but really just letting that bottom part of your body be in an easy pose. So the legs are just kind of crisscrossed, but whatever's comfortable for you, if you need to extend the legs, please do so. And then just start to orbit the torso around the legs, keeping the legs grounded and relaxed. The face is relaxed. Start to move in these gentle circles. They could be big at first, or maybe just this small spiraling action but really notice the navel space. So as you inhale, like you're smelling a bed of roses. And as you exhale, squeeze the belly, the navel towards the spine. And then coming back, inhale, exhale, as you rotate backwards, inhale, as you orbit forward. Exhale, as you round. You can start to kind of play around with this cat cow like motion through the shoulders but keep the, the shoulders soft, not clenching, not gripping anything through the palms, relaxing the palms. We'll do one more in this orbit. Exhale. And then slowly coming back through to center, lengthen tall, ground down through the tailbone, lengthen through the spine. From the low belly, take a full breath in. Open mouth, exhale. Let's do that again. Nice full breath in and up. Send the awareness in and down. Beautiful. Again, switching the legs. Actually, before you switch the legs here, I'm orbited to the right. So if you orbited to the left, you're going to be in the opposite direction. I orbited to the right, therefore I'm going to bring my right hand down. And then walk your fingertips out to a place of comfort. Inhale, left arm up and over. Do a little bit of a gate here, stretching through this left rib cage or opposite rib cage, breathing into those abdominal muscles here, the intercostal muscles, taking that nice full breath in. Exhale, stay. And then on the next inhale, slowly rise. Beautiful, and both arms come down. Now switching the legs. So back leg forward. Again, I moved to the right last time. Now I'm going to move in orbit to the left. So inhale, smell that bed of roses. Exhale, squeeze the navel in towards the spine. Again, this motion might look like mine, a little bit of a wider circle, or you might just spiral very small little circles. Just kind of this churning of the abdominal lower first, second chakra area, the root, sacral to solar. And even target the inhale to the exhale in this sacred space. I see, keep saying sacred space. This space of the lower part of the body. Shoulders are soft. Maybe you add a little bit of this cat-like cow. Inhale, 
just to start to kind of move intuitively, noticing in the body where you feel a little stuck, where you need a little bit more fluidity. One of the um, kids' intention is, I am flexible. So setting his intention to be more flexible, not only physically, but also non-physically. Um, and he's 10, <laughs> just to give a reference point. Inhale, let's do a couple more. You can slow it down a little bit. Again, this is called a Sufi grind. It's a Kriya of Kundalini Yoga. And I really just like the focus again, this lower part of the body, kind of starting with the awareness of the earth and the breath. And slowly coming back through to center, length and tall from the root ground down, rising up through the crown, soften the face, tuck the chin, take a full breath in and up. Awareness in and down, exhale out, open mouth. Let's do that again, inhale. Beautiful, so I orbited to the left. I'm gonna bring my left hand down, maybe bend to my elbow if it feels available. Inhale, right arm up. And over, taking a couple breaths here, mindful breathing. Keeping the face soft. And on an inhale, slowly rise, bring both hands back down. Beautiful, all right. Bend the knees together, bring the knees together. Again, you can keep, stay on a seat or a lift. Um, and just walk them forward a little bit and let the knees separate just a bit. Bring the hands behind the back, open up the chest just a little bit. You can stay here for a couple breaths. If it feels accessible to you, just start to let the knees drop from side to side. My camera, an camera angle is not the best, so I'm going to do my best at cueing here. This is the first time I've recorded down here. But just let the knees kind of drop side to side as though you were on your back doing a little bit of windshield wiper action, side to side action. We're still warming up, so give yourself ease and grace here wherever you're at. Pause when you need to, dig if you need to do that. So say I fall into this side and I really feel, oh, I just need to sit here for a minute and breathe into that. Don't push any pain. Again, a reminder not to force yourself into a form. And after a couple more side to side, slowly come back to center. All right, so I'm gonna move back to my mat now. Hope the sound is still good here. It's gonna be a little bit different. But from here, your knees are still bent, your heels are forward. Reaching your arms forward, we're going to just start to play around with boat pose. Again, staying in this area of the abdominals, low belly, right? That breath and the engagement. And then from here, just start to play around with pointing the toes and lifting opposite foot. So my curtain's kind of blending in with me here. Thanks for tuning in and staying with me. Just play around with leaning back into your boat pose and pointing the toes, lifting opposite foot, alternating. And if you feel ready for it, just come into a full boat. Knees can be bent, you can straighten the legs up. Feel the engagement, feel the body right now as you breathe. You might feel it shaking as you engage. Now, if you feel this in your back, come forward. The goal is to feel it right here, low belly engagement. So if you're feeling it in your back, bring your heart forward. Let your shoulders release down and back or even come forward. Play around with this just for a moment. A couple more breaths. Beautiful, rocking forward back into this pose, spread the knees and let yourself kind of drape over. So my feet are hip distance apart, my knees are bent. You can even reach your arms up and over and just drape over
over the legs. Let your head relax down, shake it out, or let it move side to side. And slowly rise back up from here. Couple options on how to come to the back. You can scoot the seat forward and roll onto your back or find your own way of comfort to land onto your back. Beautiful, from here, bend your knees, keep them about hip distance, the knees hip distance, and then just parallel the shins to the sky. And from here, just start to kind of move side to side. Arms can come out to a T, keep the knees wider. So you're kind of between hugging the knees all the way in and a happy baby. And just feel the sides of the, the body, the sides of the glutes, kind of massaging the low spine, the lumbar into the mat. And see if you can continue the breath awareness in the low belly in and up, keeping the awareness in and down. Beautiful. Coming back to center, drop the feet down, bring the hands down to the side, moving through dynamic bridge pose. So walking the feet again, hip distance apart, reaching the top, the middle finger towards the heels here. Arms are straight, but shoulders are soft. Gazing up on an inhale, arms float up and overhead, reach the hips up, bridge pose. And as you exhale, lower both the hips and the arms back down to the sides. Let's do this again. Inhale as you rise, pressing through the heels, soften the buttocks, soften the jaw and the face. Exhale slowly. Let the arms come down to side. Continue moving with your breath. No need to rush. See if you can even find a four count inhale and maybe even a four or five count exhale. Really intentional with the breath and slowing down. Inhale, four, three, two, one. Exhale, five. Four, three, two, one. Inhale, one, two, three, four. Exhale, five, four, three, two, one. On your own here. Two more. We'll come back together as a collective with the hips on the ground, the palms to the earth. And then inhale, rise up together. Keeping the hips lifted, pressing through the heels. Exhale, just the arms back down to the sides. Keep the hips lifted. Walk the shoulder blades underneath the back. Maybe even bring the palms together here. Puffy chest, curvy back, pressing through the heels. The knees should stay hip distance apart or a little closer. Pressing through the heels. You can even lift up the heels if that's in your practice. Continue to focus on the strength and vitality of the breath. Breathe intentionally here, even through the sensation that you are experiencing of the body, maybe even the thoughts that are arising, any emotion that is arising. Keep the face soft, keep the breath intentional. 
Notice what's landing here. 10 more seconds. Maybe lift a little bit higher. If you need to come down at any time, please honor your body and then exhale slowly, let the hips come down. Keeping that puppy chest for a moment here as you land and arrive. Notice here, breathe easy here. And then whenever you're ready, come into this Apanasana, bring the knees in, maybe even tuck the chin in this counter pose and rock side to side. Let the head come down, walk the feet or drop the feet, knees bent as wide as the mat and then windshield wiper side to side. Take your time here, arms up to the side. Breathe with the movement, inhale the knees up, Exhale, switch sides. Let the breath be the guide and the movement. Breathe, then move. Breathe and then move. Coming back to center, heel toe the feet together, bring the knees up to the chest, give yourself a big hug and roll on to one side, slowly making your way up into all, onto all fours in a tabletop position. Coming onto all fours, move intuitively here. So I'm gonna actually move my mat a little bit, that black curtain isn't, Helping if you are a visual learner here. So in on all fours, just start to move intuitively. Maybe start with letting the shoulders sway side to side. Maybe getting a little creative with the hip movement opposite of the shoulders. Or if you feel a little bit more linear, just moving through cat cow, bending elbows, inhaling heart forward, tailbone lifts, exhaling round the spine, draw the navel up towards the stud. What well, feels right for you, even close your eyes and just start to move on all fours. What is your body needing of this pose? What is your body needing of this movement? And maybe even child's pose. Maybe child's pose is in order. But again, continuing to breathe and then move. Breathe and then move. If you're moving in circular motions, just be sure to balance that right side, left side body. Figure eights, cat cow, child's pose, finding stillness or static. About 30 more seconds here in this intuitive movement. Go ahead and grab my hair tie up here. And then go ahead and transition now into a child's pose. Letting the knees walk wide, bring the big toes together and sink the hips back towards the heels. Balasana. Take a moment in Balasana to bring, to, to bring awareness to the breath. Maybe even practicing ujjayi breathing, this ocean breath in the back of the throat, and feel and hear the breath. This calms our nervous system. This accesses the vagal nerve, and it's very soothing. 
calming, soothing to the nervous system. So hear and feel the breath as you breathe in and breathe out. Forehead to the earth. While you're in child's pose, just notice where you're still holding in the body. If you're clenching in the shoulders or even in the palms, notice if you're clenching in the knees, the hips, or the feet. And especially notice if you're clenching in the jaw. And just find a little bit of softening into that awareness. Beautiful. A couple more breaths here. Let me adjust my screen. And then on an inhale, slowly rise back up to tabletop position. Beautiful. From here, step your right foot forward into a deep lunge. And you can use blocks, bolsters, anything to support you here. And then lift the back knee up. Beautiful. From here, we're just going to move in from a deep lunge to straightening the leg pyramid pose. So on an inhale, coming lunge forward, keeping the hips parallel to the top of the mat. And as you exhale, straighten the front leg, press through the big toe mound, lift the hips up and back, keeping the hips parallel to the top of the mat. Inhale, coming forward. Exhale, lifting the hips up and back. Come to a side here. Inhale as you come forward. Exhale, hips come up and back. Beautiful. Continue moving just like that. Let's see if this current, I'm sorry about to keep rearranging my space, but I do this for you just in case, again, you're a visual learner. So inhaling forward, exhale, lift, send the hips back. Yes. Really keeping in mind the hips to the top of the neck. Let's do one more here. Inhale, exhale, straighten that front leg. Pause here in this pyramid form. Noticing the back leg. See about dropping the heel down, pressing through the front, big toe mound of the front foot here. And then lengthen from the tailbone out. Draw the navel in, scooping the low belly. Lengthening the spine here, take a nice full breath in and up. Exhale the awareness in and down. Beautiful, bend into this knee just a little bit. Step back, downward facing dog. Move around here, alternate bending knees, keeping the hips really high and lifted. Lift the heels really high here, and then exhale as you lower the heels down towards the ground. Inhale, lift the heels up, pressing through the toes. Keep the hips sending back. Exhale, lower the heels. So the hips stay almost in the same place, but as you inhale, lift the heels up. Keep pressing the hips back. Exhale, lower the heels down. Beautiful. And then inhale, step the left foot forward. You can also Transition through tabletop, left foot forward. Beautiful, same thing on this side. Inhale through a deep lunge. Exhale, straighten that front leg, press through the big toe mound, lift the hips up and back. Parallel the hips to the top of the mat. Inhale, deep lunge. Exhale, straighten the front leg. We're gonna do about 10 of them total. 
Move with your breath. Bring the nose to the knee. This kind of stretches out the back of the neck. As close as you can get. Pressing down through the feet. Keep the awareness in that connection. Let's do two more for good measure here. Inhaling to the lunge, exhale into the pyramid pose. Last one here. In this pyramid pose, grow the spine long. So from the tailbone, keeping the hips parallel to the top of the mat, grow long out through the crown, scoop the low belly, take a nice full breath in and out. Bend in the front knee, step forward, forward, fold. Drop the head down and shake out the head and neck and shoulders. Bring the hands, interlace the fingers, even at the small of the, the neck where the neck or the spine meets the skull. Apply just a little bit of weight there to drop a little bit lower. Bend in the knees anytime. Shake out the face, even shake out the lips and cheeks. Do a little bit of bouncing here. Maybe even again, alternate between bending knees one at a time. And then on an inhale, slide the palms up to the shins, lengthen along through the spine, halfway lift, scoop the low belly. Exhale, fold. Let's do that again. Inhale, halfway lift, scoop the low belly, exhale, fold. One more. Pressing down through the feet. Micro bend in the knees. Inhale, swing the arms forward and up as you rise. Exhale, hands through heart center. Beautiful. Inhale, reach the arms up and out. Out and up. Exhale, hands through heart center. Inhale, reach the arms out and up. Interlace the fingers this time. Point the first finger, Kali Mudra. Exhale, bow to your right. Inhaling through center. Exhale, bow to your left. Inhaling through center. Exhale, bend the knees and cactus the hands, the arms. Squeeze the shoulder blades onto the back. Press the chest bone forward. Bend in the knees here a little bit. Gaze up. Beautiful. Inhale, reach up. Interlace the fingers, bow to the left on the exhale. Inhale as you rise. Exhale, bow to the right. Inhale through center. Bend the knees, sink the seat into a chair pose as you cactus the arms, gazing forward a little bit up. And come back, heart center. Beautiful. Coming to the top of the mat, we're going to move through eight sun salutation B. I think it might be best if I turn my mat <laughs> again. I'm rearranging. Does anyone else get kind of like squirrel brain sometimes? Whether you're teaching or you're taking a yoga class, something that we strive for. This focus, maybe my collective intention is I am focused. Right? So at the top of the mat, Bring your hands to heart center. Ground down through the feet. Even lift the toes, spread the toes. Pressing each foot down, each toe down with intention. And then lift up through the heels. Pressing down through the feet, all four corners of the feet. Pressing down, inhale, reach up. 
On an exhale, bend into chair pose, sink into chair pose. Exhale, forward fold. Step back, high plank. Move through chaturanga or lower down, pulling up into upward facing dog or baby cobra. Exhale, downward facing dog. Step the left foot forward, deep lunge. Inhale as you rise. Exhale, plank pose. Moving through chaturanga or upward facing dog or staying in plank pose. Press back downward facing dog. Stepping the right foot forward. Inhale as you rise, warrior one or runner's lunge. Exhale as you lower down. Step forward, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Scoop the low belly. Exhale as you fold. Inhale as you rise. Exhale, mountain pose. That was one. We're going to do seven more. Inhale, mountain pose. Exhale, stay. Inhale, chair pose. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, plank pose. Moving through vinyasa here, chaturanga to upward facing dog or baby cobra, downward facing dog. Step the right foot forward this time, deep lunge. Inhale as you rise, crescent lunge. Exhale, plank pose. Moving through vinyasa flow of your choice or press back downward facing dog. Inhale, left foot forward as you rise, inhale. Exhale, hands come down, step forward, halfway lift. Scoop the low belly here, dump the breath on the exhale. Again, inhale, halfway lift. Scoop the low belly, dump the breath on the exhale. <sighs> inhale, rise. Mountain pose. Inhale. And exhale. Inhale, cha uh, chair pose. Exhale, forward fold. Halfway lift. Plank pose. Chaturanga, your, your choice of back bend here, downward facing down. Right foot steps forward, inhale as you rise. Exhale, plank pose. Downward facing duck. Left foot steps forward, inhale as you rise. Exhale, hands come down. Forward fold. Halfway lift. Dump the breath. <sighs> Inhale, rise. Mountain pose. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale, chair pose. Exhale, forward fold. Plank pose. Chaturanga vinyasa flow. Move with your breath. Move with what feels right. Not necessarily my cue. You want to stay with me. Left foot forward. Inhale, rise. Exhale, plank pose. Downward dog. Right foot steps forward. Inhale, rise. Feel your breath. Move. Then breathe. Forward fold. Halfway lift. Dump the breath. <sighs> Mountain pose. Halfway there. Chair pose. Forward fold. Plank pose. 
Vinyasa flow. Downward dog. Right foot forward, alternating each round, each sequence. Plank pose. Downward dog. Other leg. Move with your breath. Forward fold. Halfway lift. Dump the breath. Mountain pose. Feel the feet grounded down here. Take another extra breath in this pose. Inhale, chair. Forward fold. Halfway lift. Plank pose. Vinyasa. Down dog. Left foot. Breathe as you rise. Plank pose. Downward dog. Right foot forward. Inhale, rise. Rising together here. Forward fold. Halfway lift. Dump the breath. Tadasana. Anytime you can slow down and come to child's pose. Got two more left. Move at your own pace. Inhale. Exhale. Halfway lift. Dump the breath. Plank pose. Chaturanga. Vinyasa flow, downward dog. Left foot, crescent lunge, inhale, rise, draw the navel in and up. Plank pose. Downward dog. Right foot forward. Inhale as you rise. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift, scoop that low belly. Dump the breath. Do this a couple more times with your breath. Inhale, halfway lift. Scoop the low belly. Inhale, swing the arms out and up, Tadasana. Last one here. Move at your own pace. Chair pose. Forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift, plank pose. Vinyasa, downward dog. Left foot forward. Inhale, breathe. <laughs> breathe and then move, plank pose. Downward dog. Right foot forward. Inhale, rise. Exhale, fold, halfway lift, dump the breath. Last one, inhale, rise up. Exhale, hands to your heart center. Pause here and Tadasana. Close the eyes, bring one hand to the heart, place the other on top. Remember your intention here. Feeling the heartbeat. Bringing awareness to the breath. Notice what's changed, what's landed. Simultaneously feeling the feet rooted into the ground, into the earth. Beautiful, at the top of the mat here. Walk the feet a little bit wider than hip distance. Inhale, reach arms up. Exhale, forward fold. Bring the hands, if you need to bend the knees, do so. Bring the hands inside of the feet and step the right foot back to lizard pose. 
So the hands are in between the thighs, drop the back knee down. So here we are in lizard pose, just start to move the hips side to side. <sighs> Letting the breath kind of find some form of regulation here. You can move this knee, this top knee, front, back, side, side. Again, be intuitive, just like we did on all fours. Move intuitively here. Swaying the hips side to side, maybe even moving the hips back and forward. And all the while, mindfully breathing. You can even lift that back knee up if you want. Spend another 10 seconds of breathing here. Beautiful. If that back knee is lifted, drop it down. Bring this left hand onto the outside. Walk the foot towards the right hand as far as you can, and then come into pigeon prep. So you may need to make a little bit of adjustments here. If the right hip or the opposite hip is lifted, lift up, walk the knee back or forward to make that adjustment. Come to the side. So whether you need to walk the knee forward for the sake of the hips to stay parallel to the mat, or maybe you can walk that knee back and play around with keeping the toes curled under or pointing the toes, or maybe even if you're at this level of bending in the knee and playing around with the sensation of that. Maybe even coming into, if you want, if you feel that it is in your practice to come into King Pigeon, playing around with hand positioning, or just kind of sinking in what feels right for you. Find that confidence in your body here. Breathe and then rest. <laughs> Stay in this place, unless it's painful. But breathing into all of the sensations that are here. Sometimes it finds nice sensation to walk the hands off towards that front knee that's bent maybe angling the arms, or even the opposite position of where that front knee is. Play around with this. Play. Breathe. And just take about five more intentional breaths here. And begin to bring the palms back to the mat, shoulder distance apart, straightening the arms. On an inhale, pressing through either tabletop or all the way to a downward facing dog. And then flow here from down dog to plank pose to down dog, but get a little creative and let the spine kind of move and wave like undulations as you kind of move in and out. And then jump step, walk to the top of the mat, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift, scoop the low belly. 
Draw the pelvic floor up, exhale, dump the breath. <sighs> Inhale as you rise. Exhale, hands to heart center. Yeah, again, step the feet as wide, a little bit wider than hip distance apart. Inhale as you rise, arms out and up. Exhale, hands through heart center, forward fold. From here, again, place the palms between the feet and step the left foot back to a lizard pose. Again, you can drop the knee down. You can keep the knee lifted, but move intuitively here in this lizard, or sometimes they call this gecko, or I've heard kamikaze pigeon. So much, so many translations, right? But most importantly, notice what this pose brings to you. Maybe it's not about the pose, but it's about you in the pose, right? So feel and notice where you're at. Moving circular motion, circular motion, side to side, front to back. Breathe and then move. Beautiful. And then when you're ready from here, you found that balance of left to the right side body. Walk this right foot towards the opposite side. Drop the knee down, coming into your pigeon prep. And slow down here. No need to just jump right into the pose. Slow down and feel this side. Notice this side in comparison to the other side. We're not as symmetrical as we expect to be. See about maybe bending that back leg. If king pigeon is accessible to you or even inviting to you. And then play around with where the arms want to go. Maybe just bending the four, coming down to forearms, bending the elbows. I uh, know that walking the elbows off towards the bent knee in the front body or walking the elbows off to the opposite side more towards that front foot or even walking the hands forward. I know threading the needle is even an option here, but notice what feels good and right to you. If one thing good comes from Zooming during a pandemic, it's that you choose what you want to be in this pose. And I hope that you bring that back when we do join forces and come back as a collective that you continue to focus on what feels right for you and your body. Breathe there. And taking about five more mindful breaths into these sensations. Finding confidence in the silence. And then very slowly, first just lifting the gaze. 
and bringing the palms, feeling the connection of palm to the earth, straightening the arms slowly, transitioning through tabletop. Coming to tabletop, just pause here, gazing down, orient yourself in this moment with the breath, with this newfound sense of body and sensation. And breathe in and breathe out. From here, moving to tabletop. I'm sorry, down dog, jump step, walk to forward fold. Inhale as you rise. Exhale, hands through heart center. Beautiful, coming slowly into a balance pose before coming back down to the ground here. Since our hips are nice and pliable with the movements that we've done so far in this practice, going to give a couple options um, for this next balance pose. We're going to come in. Um, the full pose would be hand to toe, but I'm gonna break it down and choose which feels right and true to you. So first is to come into a chair pose. Chair pose is challenging in itself, right? Drawing the navel in, lengthening through the spine, weight in the heels, and as though you're trying to reach your seat back towards a chair, find this positioning. Now from here, you can stay, Chair pose can hand, have hands at heart center or arms overhead. Or start to lean into the right foot here, bend into this left knee and figure four the left ankle over the top of the right thigh. Now from here, a cradle pose, you can come down with the hands, maybe even wrapping the arms around this leg into cradle pose and start to lengthen up. You may still be in chair pose at any point here. Uh, we call this flamingo pose at the school. Option B is to kind of feel around with this balance. And option C is to interlace the finger, the left finger, first finger around the big toe, and begin to either open with knee bent, heel parallel to the ground, or start to extend that left leg and counterbalance with the right side body. Wherever you land in these three options, breathe into the stability and balance and focus. One more nice full breath. And as you exhale, slowly come back to your roots. Forward fold, shake it out. Even a little malasana, deep squat, swaying side to side. Whatever movement you need to do here to find neutrality. I even like to sometimes <sighs> shake my whole body on the exhale. So it's an inhale. <sighs> Looks super silly. I'm glad no one's in the room with me. Y'all are on my screen though. Take a nice little breath in, bend the knees when you do this and bounce. <laughs> Beautiful, setting up for the other side. Take a moment here just to roll the wrists. A couple times to the right and then opposite direction. And then moving on to the next side. The last one was my right standing foot. Moving through chair pose. This time it's my left standing foot rooting down through this left side body. Option to stay in chair pose or come into cradle. And you can use blocks at the bottom of my hands here or bring the sole of the foot into the crease of my arm and start to lift up. So this little flamingo action. And of course, if you feel this is true for you and your body, feels right. Start to slowly open up on this right side as you extend the leg. 
counterbalancing the weight, find that length, find that ground, find the breath, wherever you are is right where you need to be. Take a nice full breath in and out. And slowly come back to your roots. Don't take yourself so seriously here. <laughs> I had a teacher once say, and I think I've said this in every class I've taught, if, are you smiling? And if you're not, you're doing too much. <laughs> It's a nice measurement to what I'm, what's over efforting and what's right on time. Let's do this silly breath jump because it's Friday. Take a nice full breath in and shake it up. Shake out the cheeks this time. Beautiful. Slowly come down onto your mat. Take your time arriving down onto your mat, coming onto your back. And when you arrive on your back, just grab your knees, hug yourself in, draw the knees in, draw the chin in, squeeze the obliques, the abdominal muscles here, engaging that core for the count of 10, nine, Eight, soften the face, seven, six, five, find that low belly breath, four, three, two, one, beautiful. Reach the arms up overhead, stretch the legs really long here. Puffy chest, walk the shoulder blades together. Even though the arms are overhead, you can still walk the shoulder blades onto the back. Stretch through the toes, through the feet, through the heels through the fingertips, see how long you can get here. Tuck the chin in slightly and breathe from the low belly. Beautiful. From here, take any final movement for your practice that feels necessary to you, whether that be a little bit of a supine twist, bending the right knee, drawing it across the body and switching sides. Maybe a little bit of twisting, maybe a little shoulder stand, maybe you like inversions. What feels nice for you to close out your practice before coming into a, a space of rest? Take that time, I'll give you about two minutes or one minute to come into that place where you can find your corpse pose. And as they say in uh, <laughs> restorative yoga, which I'm trained in, that stillness and sweetness. Stira sukha asanam. So you're finding sweetness and stillness in your, in your body. So maybe you need to do a little bit more of energizing movements really quick before you get there. Or maybe you feel ready to kind of dig and sink and surrender into this place of rest. Most important pose, some may argue, of a yoga practice is the rest. It's hard. It's hard for, for the best of us, right? And still just as necessary. We're coming into that place. And I will sit in silence with you as you find comfort and ease and stillness and sweetness. And after a few moments of the silence, I'll read to you a poem that I've been immersing myself into. It's from David White, um, the book. He's a poet and he wrote the book, uh, The House of Belonging. This poem is what to remember when waking, but I'll give you a few minutes here. Again, 
to find that heaviness in the body. Stira, Sukha, Asana. Stira, Sukha, Asana. And finding awareness in the crown of the head and breathing awareness from the toes of the body, relaxing from the soles of the feet up to the knees, up to the hips, relaxing in that low belly space. And just take a nice full breath into the low belly. And as you open the mouth, exhale, sigh. <sighs> Allowing yourself to sink a little bit more into the earth. And softening the shoulders from the inside out, palms resting from the inside out. And soften the throat and the jaw the cheeks and the eyes and softening the space between the brows. Closing the eyes and allowing yourself to just be. And breathing in and breathing out. Breathing into the space that surrounds you. And breathing into the space that is within you. And remember that you are not separate. what to remember when waking in that first hardly noticed moment in which you wake, coming back to this life from the other, more secret, movable, and frighteningly honest world where everything began. There is a small opening into the day which closes the moment you begin your plans. What you can plan is too small for you to live. What you can live wholeheartedly will make plans enough for the vitality hidden in your sleep. To be human is to be visible while carrying what is hidden as a gift to others. To remember the other world in this world is to live in your true inheritance. You are not a troubled guest on this earth. You are not an accident amidst other accidents. You were invited from another and greater night than the one from which you have just emerged. Now, looking through the slanting light of the morning window towards the mountain presence. Of everything that can be, what urgency calls you to your one love? What shape waits in the seed of you to grow and spread its branches against a future sky? Is it waiting in the fertile sea, in the trees beyond the house, in the life you can imagine for yourself? 
in the open and lovely white page on the waiting desk. And breathing in and out collectively. Thank you for joining and settling. Thank you for landing here with me on this Friday, April 16th. It's 516 and I hope you have a lovely weekend. Namaste. You're so welcome for the poem. Again, The House of Belonging by David White. The poem, What to Remember When Waking. Sleep well, my friends.